everyone. My name is Jeff Bull. Hi, my name is Eric Knepp. Eric, I've said this a bunch of times today, but it is really cool to be back at Cisco Live. Heck yeah. Not just at Cisco Live, but we're in person. It's been years. I mean, yeah. okay, it actually has been years, but it feels like it's been years. Absolutely. It's really good to see you. Me um, too. There is so much that is happening here today. We're in yeah. the DevNet zone. Obviously, programmability and automation is happening everywhere. And I thought what would be a really good place to start off is just by asking you, you know, what are you hearing? What are you yeah. seeing here? What are you hearing from customers? Like, what are the things that are bubbling to the top when you're meeting with customers right now and at an event like this? Absolutely. I mean, it's, and it's the million dollar question. And I'll start with, someone once broke my heart and they said, you know what? No CIO wants to buy routers. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh, it broke no. my heart, right? They said <laughs> that they need to buy routers and switches and, and servers because they want to run applications. And those applications, I mean, if we think about the, the pandemic and the way that, that life has changed and how everything was digitized, that application experience has become so important. Mm -hmm. and you put some numbers to it, 500 million new applications coming online almost exclusively for the cloud over the next three years. And so what CIOs are saying to me is, make the network more relevant to my application developers. Make the network something that my CICD pipelines can speak to. And they're saying, make it so that the network is no longer inhibiting my ability to be agile, but is enabling my ability to be agile. I would like that. Oh, okay, so many things I want to talk yeah, about. Okay. You know what you just said. Yeah. Um, but one of, my, one of my favorite things, and what you brought up, is something I've had a conversation with some of our developer advocates, is mm -hmm. we're thinking about what yeah. sort of content can we create that can help our community, mm -hmm. and help them actually understand how to solve for the things you're describing. Yeah. And one of the conversations we had recently was, software developers and network engineers, or we call them SREs, whatever term we want to use, mm -hmm. they're not that different from no. each other. They just don't realize that the language they're talking is just a little different. Mm -hmm. And the, the way I sort of like to describe it is, as network engineers, as networking, as networking people, we don't build networks just for fun. Like no. the, the Golden Gate Bridge. It is Bridge, fun though. It is fun, yeah. but we didn't, the, the Golden Gate Bridge was not built in you know, the middle of the ocean just because somebody wanted to build a bridge. <laughs> right. You built a bridge to connect two things. Yeah. You build networks in those environments for applications to run on top of. Exactly. Conversely, just like you said, for software developers, mm -hmm. you're also not just writing code just because you enjoy writing code. Right. There's a need, there's an outcome, and you have to put it on top of things. Right. They don't run on hopes and dreams, <laughs> like they do <laughs> run on data centers or clouds, but there are some there are boxes and hardware that is running someplace sure. that your code is on top of. Right. And at the end of the day, those two things can work together, but mm -hmm. what we're really trying to figure out is how do we start to build that bridge? So I'm curious from you, mm -hmm. when you talk to those customers, mm -hmm. whether it's you know, the CTO who's trying to figure out how to make that network work for the application developer, right. or vice versa. Mm -hmm. what, are, what, what are you picking up on that we can actually start to help them with? So, uh, that is the, that's the billion dollar question. And, and, I, I, and I think it's the one we really, at Cisco, are so uniquely positioned to answer. Because, again, we've, tr we've tended to look at the network and applications as ships in the night, right? Yes. I'll do our thing, you do your thing. But there's a, an incredible amount of insight, of data, of telemetry, the network can be providing those application providers. I mean, think about, again, I'm gonna, I don't want to plug products here, right? But think about what we've done at Pen one what we've done at Pen one is we've leveraged the network in conjunction with an application experience to drive a completely different working experience for the employees going in there. So it's kind of the best of both worlds and it's not possible, it can't be solved just with applications, it can't be solved just with the network, but it's those two coming together. So CIOs are telling me, how do I drive a different experience? How do I make that application experience, that employee experience, that end user experience better? Mm -hmm. But also, how do I pull things like streaming telemetry from what the network is already seeing to make my application developers better at their jobs as well. It's a tall order, but when they say it out loud that simply, it's like, well, that's kind of a no-brainer. We should be doing that. Right. We can be doing that. And if you listen to some of the work coming out of this team, we are doing that. The average end user will give an application two chances to work before they just they, they scrap it. And again, what have we found, right? I can go to Uber, I can go to Lyft, I get the same basic service. I can go to Uber Eats, I can go to Grubhub, same basic service. So what this 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 insight that we can give, and again, we talk about full stack observability as the solution that's out there. You know, we were launching the predictive WAN services this this week as, a, as an, another example. But what we can give them is certainty. 
with the information that we have with what we're observing to make that end user experience better. Because to your point, people don't build networks because they want to, they need to run applications. People don't write applications because they want to, they want to, they want to run a business. Yes. This makes that, essentially again, we're the bridge, if you will, between the application. It comes up every once in a while, right? But we're the bridge between the end user experience mm -hmm. and the, 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 the business that's trying to enable it. Right. Right, I think that's, that is the important point right. that all of, us, all of us can focus on regardless Absolutely. of who we're talking to is yeah. the bridge component there in the middle is just getting two groups to be able to talk to each other Absolutely. and understand you're both here for the same reason. Mm -hmm. It looks, what the tools and the methodologies you tend to work with on a daily basis mm -hmm. look, the, uh, look different, mm -hmm. but they are the same. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the early conversations I had was about the fundamentals of you know, writing code, the logic, understanding mm -hmm. logical flow and how to, how to call from one step to the next mm -hmm. step. It's almost the same thing as the OSI, OSI model. Yeah. They look different and they sound different, yeah. but they're not different. You need to have, as long as you have these two things running side by side, we were talking about low code and no code earlier. Mm -hmm. It's a similar thing. As long as you understand those two fundamentals, mm -hmm. you can make this stuff work together. Yeah, you I really mean, can. Think about building a house, right? One individual or one, one construction agency doesn't necessarily build the entire house. Right. You've got electrical specialists, you've got plumbing exactly. specialists, you've got carpenters. Exactly. It's important for them to be able to speak to one another and understand each other's value, but they don't necessarily need to do each other's jobs. So it's where can we get those efficiencies, those economies of scale, ultimately helping each group be very successful in their task, but ultimately driving greater understanding across the entirety of that project, because we all need to build a house, right? We all need a house. We all need to build a house. All right. yeah. Okay, so I want to change gears for just a second or two. Hey, we were talking about this a little bit earlier, but yeah. I think I heard about something called Beat the Boss. Beat the Boss. And like, I, it sounds fun yeah. because most of us are like, oh, how can I beat something? Yeah. Can you, what is this? All right, so, so I am a little bit annoying in my advocacy for DevNet and DevRel. I believe this is the future. And we appreciate it. I know, and I appreciate you guys. I, I get some great swag from you guys, by the way, which I love. But, um, but um, very early on, after we announced the, uh, the DevNet certifications, um, this is to me something that, again, we do not need every one of my team to become a developer, well, we don't need everyone to become a coder, but I want everyone to become a developer and take that developer mindset, which is back to that idea of, I want to understand the outcome my customer's trying to drive and all of the capabilities I have available to, to meet those needs. And I, I looked at when uh, when we launched the DevNet certifications, and again, this was, can you believe it's been over two years? No. Yeah, it's no. been a long time, it's, all, it's pandemic time, right? Pandemic um, time, in the but, before uh, times. In the before times, the time before. Uh, but uh, but when, we la when those were launched, we were very excited, and we looked at uh, the Americas team and said, what can we do to make a big splash? Mm -hmm. And and I, I, I want to consider myself a developer as well, so I said in my own personal, uh, development plan, I'm going to get the, the uh, DevNet Associate Certification. I'm actually working on my professional as well. It's been a little slow. Thank you. But I've been traveling a little bit more lately. But, um, but I said, I'm going to do this. And I thought, okay, how do, we, how do we make this fun for the team? And how do we maybe incent a little bit of behavior? So I put out a crazy goal. I said I wanted, about, I wanted 40 to 50% of my team to achieve the DevNet Certification. I said a number of DevNet 1K. I wanted okay. 1,000 people to uh, 1,000 members of my team by the end of fiscal 2020 to reach the DevNet certification. I didn't think it was ever possible. But you know, something about kicking my butt inspires the I, team. I don't understand, yeah. I can't imagine yeah. how. The first day of the contest, we had over 50 people certified. That's fantastic. Right? And by the end of fiscal 20, I mean, actually it was into mid-2021, mid so it was by the end of the, of the calendar year, we had reached our goal and we're seven over. Oh my gosh, that is fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations. Absolutely. It's amazing. But, but it's driving a different conversation with our customers. We're seeing um, some incredible uh, innovation come uh, organically through the team, right? People are looking at the Meraki APIs, the, the, uh, the um, DNA Spaces APIs, and they're creating some really unique uh, solutions for their customers that we would have never thought of and we never productized. In fact, one of the teams in Latin America built a mining safety application that leveraged embedded telemetry in hard hats to, and, uh, and DNA spaces telemetry and then some basic air quality monitoring to create a, a safety application for miners. The customer loved it so much, they came to us and said, we want to buy it, and we're like, we can't because it's not actually a product, but we can sell you all the components mm -hmm. that, that make that up. This is what's going to drive relevance for Cisco solutions right. at, in, in both the, in both the, uh, the, the vertical in the, in the line of business, as well as with the IT buyer. This is the future. I completely agree with you. And actually, one of the behaviors, I shouldn't even say behavior, one of the mindset shifts, 
I love the idea of mindset. Mm -hmm. Carol Dweck and her work on mindset, I think is amazing because it's something you just called out really hits hard for me is it starts to help people who are talking to our customers and organizations and how we can help them mm -hmm. start to think about things a little bit differently. This mm -hmm. is all about how to solve a problem. Absolutely. It's, it's not about selling you a product. It's not about that. It's about no. how can we help you get to the solution to your problem. Let's figure that out. And you're basically gaining new tools to understand how to connect those things together. That's what's important about this. I, I love that you brought that up. Thank you. Before we wrap up, yeah. I just have one last question for you. What, I mean, what is your favorite thing of Cisco Live? Well, I mean, obviously DevNet, the DevNet zone. Really? Oh yeah, my gosh, yeah. I had no idea. Oh. <laughs> That's awesome. Eric, thank you so much. It's been great talking to you my today. My pleasure, sir. Thank you all for being here so much. Check out any new information you want to find about our program and others at developer.cisco.com.